everybody. Welcome to Microbiology. Um, this is the first of our what I call mini lessons. So since we can't meet together in person, what I am, will be doing is presenting the lectures in these short little um, chunks from each chapter. The presentation will follow along with the PowerPoints that are available on Blackboard as well as the lecture notes um, that are available on Blackboard. So I have those here that I'll be referencing to make sure I'm touching on everything. Um, yeah, so it's kind of a way for me to have a little bit of interaction with you, even though it's through the digital world. Um, and hopefully my um, these lessons will help explain things that sometimes are a little bit harder to understand just reading the textbook. I do want to say that there's a tent behind me because my son and I are camping in our living room tonight and I didn't want to take it down. <laughs> so um, that's summer. So we'll have fun with that. Um, also, the way just the way that my house is, um, you get to see my you'll get to see my living room and part of my kitchen. Um, I know some of you may have been in a lot of Zoom office hours or Zoom classes over spring break and you may have got to peek into classmates or other instructors houses and lives. So this is what my house looks like um, for the summer term. So usually what I do um, on the first day of microbiology after I go through all the kind of boring first day stuff is I read an excerpt from a wonderful book called The Microbe Hunters. There we go, by Paul de Cruyff. It's the first chapter. Um, every chapter is named after a microbe hunter, a person um, who's been made famous by their contribution to microbiology. Um, and the first one is by Antoni van Leeuwenhoek, his contribution. So we're going to talk about him on the next slide, but I really like this as a good start into what we are going to be talking about um, for our microbiology journey this summer. Um, the context of this excerpt is um, Leeuwenhoek was not a scientist. He was a store owner. He kind of um, just had like a a general store and um, he had a hobby though of grinding lenses so he likes to grind lenses really really fine good quality surfaces curved glass lenses and then he would look at things small things and be amazed by the detail of what he would find while looking through these curved lenses um, and so this is the story of what he does when he looks at water uh, rainwater coming off of his roof with one of those lenses um, Leeuwenhoek's day of days had come. Alexander had gone to India and discovered huge elephants that no Greek had ever seen before. But those elephants were as commonplace to Hindus as horses were to Alexander. Caesar had gone to England and come upon savages that op opened his eyes with wonder. But these Britons were as ordinary to each other as Roman centurions were to Caesar. Balboa? What were his proud feelings as he looked for the first time at the Pacific? Just, that, just the same, that ocean was as ordinary to a Central American Indian as a Mediterranean was to Balboa. But Leeuwenhoek, this janitor or store owner of Delft, had stolen upon and peeped into a fantastic, subvisible world of little things, creatures that had lived, had bred, had battled, had died, completely hidden from and unknown to all men from the beginning of time. Beasts these were of a kind that ravaged and annihilated whole races of men 10 million times larger than they were themselves. Beings these were more terrible than fire-spitting dragons or hydra-headed monsters. These were silent assassins that murdered babes in warm cradles and kings in sheltered places. It was this invisible, insignificant, but implacable and sometimes friendly world that Leeuwenhoek had Leeuwenhoek had looked into for the first time of all men of all countries. This was Leeuwenhoek's day of days. Oh, I love that. I love that writing. So the idea that up to that point, microbes were unknown because nobody had ever seen them. They had seen the effects of them, disease, um, fermentation, like winemaking, but there was no... Um, ability to know what they were or that they even existed. So once he was able to see them and then shared unwillingly to some degree, um, shared that knowledge with other people, then as the technology grew and more microscopes were able to be created, um, we now have this whole invisible world um, that we can discover and study and learn from. 
So this first little mini lesson was that introduction and then talking a little bit about um, the early years. So the whole chapter one is a brief history of microbiology. Um, so I've, breaking it, I've broken it down into kind of the key questions that are on the lecture note outline and how it's presented in the textbook. So we're going to take a look at the early years first with Leeuwenhoek. So there's a painting or a drawing of him sitting there. And up in the right hand corner, you can see that is what one of his microscopes would look like. It was just a little brass plate. The, um, let me see if I can get my pen working today. Right here in that circle, that's where he would smush, he would grind the lens and he'd smush the lens in between these two plates of brass or whatever metal he did. And then on the tip of that little screw, that's where he put the fly's head or the worm or the leaf or the pollen grain, he'd stick that on there and then you'd hold it up to the light, you'd hold it in your eye, uh, right in front of your eye, you'd look through the lens and it magnified that specimen. Well, on this day of days, what he did was, not only was he good at grinding glass into lenses, but he would draw glass tubes out, really, really fine glass tubes. Um, and then he went and he just sampled some rainwater that fell off of his roof into this barrel. He put some of this, what he thought was pure rainwater, um, set it on one of his microscopes, looked through it, and he saw bacteria. For the first time anybody had ever seen bacteria, he did. So amazing. Um, so that's his story. Um, he called them um, wee beasties. So here's a picture of uh, one of the wee beasties, if you think um, of what he looked at. Um, those are sperm. So he looked at his sperm under the microscope. He looked at anything he could get his hands on um, under this microscope. He was just fascinated by all of the details that he could see. And he was writing back and forth to the Royal Society in London, and they were publishing his work. And um, he was a very interesting individual. He made a microscope for every specimen. He didn't reuse them very often. So he ended up with like over 400 microscopes that he had displayed in his house. And um, if he wanted to look at something again, he just grabbed that microscope, looked at it, and then put it back. All right, so that is the beginning of our story, how we first got to see microbes. The next um, here slide is just showing what are some living things that are considered microscopic. Well, uh, we'll be talking about classification and um, taxonomic schemes and stuff like that in chapter four, but you should be somewhat familiar with categories of life, right? So plants, animals, fungi, protists. Um, and so here are some microscopic representations of those different categories of living things. So there's microscopic versions of fungi. This is a picture of yeast. There are microscopic versions of animals, little multicellular critters. It's usually larva or actually small little crustaceans. Um, there's microscopic examples of protozoa. These are typically single-celled um, organisms. They're neither plant nor animal, so they kind of fit in their own little category. Um, you can have algae, uh, single-celled algae, and you can have prokaryotes, which are the smallest of cells. And so we have a couple different examples of various types of um, bacteria or archaea, what we call prokaryotes, right? Eukaryote with a nucleus, prokaryote lacking a nucleus. Um, and then this last category, like right over my head here, these are viruses. We're going to do a whole chapter on viruses a little bit later in chapter 13. They're technically not living. They are not living organisms, but we still consider them because of their huge impact they have on living organisms. Okay, so that is our early years. So the introduction, the little story about Leeuwenhoek, and then just the different classifications of microbes. We are going to be spending our whole summer talking about these two groups, mostly these groups. We only have one chapter on viruses. Everything else is going to be dealing with prokaryotes. We're not going to spend a lot of time on eukaryotes. That was information that you learned in Bi211, um, which I will be referencing every once in a while. So if you're a little bit rusty on those, make sure you um, send questions or come to office hour or whatever to try to get things straightened out if you need to. Okay, well, I will see you next time when we continue our journey through chapter one. Okay, bye. <laughs>